Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Telecom video, well, we have a lot of Ryzen news, to say the least, including a full lineup of the processors, the pricing, the clock speed, and specifications. We'll tackle that one in just a second. I want to get the first of the two pieces of news out of the way. F well, you know, first. I really set myself up for that one, didn't I? And that is Intel have announced a 7 billion fabrication 42 um, venture to manufacture 7nm chips in Arizona. And this was actually announced during a White House visit with B Donald Trump. So there's going to be 13 thousand jobs total with another 3,000 people directly and create an additional 10,000 jobs for support purposes. This is according to the CEO Brian Cronich, which is pretty cool. He has said Intel is very proud of the fact the majority of manufacturing is here in the US and the majority of research and development is also here in the US. We've been able to do that even when the regulatory and tax policies have disadvantaged us in the past relative to the competition and we have across the world end quote so that's pretty cool you know the jump to 7nm we all know that eventually you know the shrinking of processor um you know uh, dies is well really the way to go to improve performance and we of course definitely know that intel are going to be planning to launch the i7-8000 series, which is the 8th generation of processors, which are boasted to offer a 15% improvement over the 7th generation of processors, and these are naturally named Cannon Lake and possibly Coffee Lake as well, but um, obviously they're manufactured on a 14nm plus process, so we can only wait and see what happens with 7nm. Anywho... Let's focus now on Ryzen, which is definitely the biggest of the two pieces of news. And a massive number of you have messaged me regarding Ryzen over the past few days. And, um, well, I'm going to mention some of your names. Hopefully I've gotten all of them. There may be a couple of others that have messaged me on uh, email or Twitter. But as of the time I'm recording this, the folks I've noticed are Christopher... I'm uh, only going to say first names, Rod, Xavier, Curtis, Henrik, and Eugene yet again, as well as Yelaz via email. So thank you all for various comments, messages, and different links to relevant slides. Now, let's start, shall we? Because there is so much to go through here, it's actually kind of difficult to start anywhere. So first things first, um, I'm going to go through the processor um, specifications. So we all know the naming conventions. Some people dislike them. Some people absolutely really dislike them. I'm personally not really a big fan of the processor names, and I won't go through what they are because we all know that you know Ryzen 7 1800X, the Ryzen 7 Pro 1800. As I said, I really dislike the names. There's a couple of reasons I dislike them. Like, what does seven represent? Uh, I know that, you know, obviously 7 is higher than a 5, and they're probably going very Intel-like in that. Personally, I think from the point of view of just customer ease, and I don't mean for, like, you know, enthusiasts, I just mean for the average person, I would have preferred to have seen the, the um, you know, Ryzen 8, which would represent 8 cores. I think that would make more sense. Or Ryzen 16, which would represent the number of threads. But, you know, it's not to be. It is what it is, so who cares? My other issue is, like, Ryzen 7, 1800X. Okay, you're you're an average person. Is 1800X better than a Ryzen 7 Pro 1800? Just on the top of your head? Well, possibly not. Anyway, um, I'm somewhat covering old ground, so let's get on to the main new parts. So one thing is for sure. Not all of the processors are supporting XFR. And there have been some rumours as to this, but it would appear that some um, more retailers, Beidou for example, have leaked a whole bunch of stuff and backed up other retailers that we've seen, for example, Shop BLT. So what we're seeing is, for example, the 1700X, which supports XFR, for example, 4 gigahertz plus. Whereas the 1700, I'm oh, sorry, the 1800X, the 1700X both support XFR, but the regular 1700 does not support XFR. In other words, anything that has an X at the end has XFR enabled, which is kind of what we expected. XFR, just for those of you who do not know, stands for Extended Frequency Range. It's basically automated, automated 
overclocking, excuse me. The whole purpose behind that is that the chip will increase frequencies based upon the, you know, the overheads that it believes it's capable of pushing the processor. This is, of course, um, based upon power consumption, heat, and the cooling solution that you have. We'll get more into that in just a moment. So the prices for these processors, uh, we're going to be focusing on the US dollar prices, although the um, original pricing is from the yuan, which is, of course, the Chinese currency. So once again, I'm going to say the US dollar equivalents, which obviously exchange rates and e-tailers may decide to give a bit of price gouging. So this is essentially going to be the RRP. So the 1800X, 500 US dollars, 1700X, 389 US dollars. The 1700 is like, you know, the Circus of Values chip. God, I hated that thing. Welcome to the Circus of Value! It was okay and funny the first 50th time. Anyway, 319 US dollars, 18, the 1600X, which is a 6-core, uh, 12-thread processor, 259. Um, the 1500, 229, 199 for the 1400X, which goes down, of course, to the 4-core, 8 threads, which is still pretty impressive. I'd just like to add, by the way, that that is an insane price. You're looking at about the same as, like, a i5, but you're getting those additional threads. Now, how well that compares to, let's say, the 7600K, you're just going to have to wait and see. 1300, well, that's 175 US dollars. The 1200X, four cores, four threads, 149 US dollars. And the 1100, which is four cores, four threads, much lower clock speed, 129 US dollars. Automatically, I mean, my personal opinion is, Jesus, there are some really nice bargains there. I mean, the 1400X, there's just no reason you wouldn't go above, you wouldn't go to that from the 1300, because it's got just, you know, higher clock speeds basically guaranteed. It's got a turbo of 3.9, a higher base clock, and 199 US dollars compared to, let's say, 175. Why not? The problem is... Then you can say, you can very easily argue with yourself on this one. Because 199 US dollars, but then you can say, gee, like, you know, the 259 or 229 for those additional threads and cores? Mmm, I would like that, please. And then it gets even worse, because then you can start making that, that argument to yourself, well, the 1700's not that much more, it's only 319. And suddenly you've gone from like, you know, oh, okay, well, I can spend, you know... 199 US dollars to suddenly, well, it's only another, you know, 50% more. But anyway, that's kind of the point with these prices. They're just really freaking aggressive. Um, and I'd also like to point out another small piece of news concerning the coolers. So the 18, the 17, and the 1600 X's, so all of the three X's, require special coolers. So that basically means that they're going to require much better cooling, um, better HSF heatsink fan, and all of the processors, just to clarify, will have a TDP of at least 65 watts. The higher end parts go up to 95 watts, which is kind of nummy, to say the least. So what are my thoughts on this? Because it's really weird. I kind of gave my thoughts yesterday, but now we've got more information on the pricing and a little more clarification on the, on the XFR. Yesterday, it was just kind of like, this is how we think it works. Now, I would hasten to add, before we go any further, first of all, I have not benchmarked these processors. The second point is that this is not official. I have not gone on to Amazon.co.uk or .com or whatever, put the processor into my basket, gone out and bought it. The reason that's very important is because ultimately there is a small possibility that these are leaked prices, that retailers are collaborating, and I'm not saying this is the case, I'm just saying it's ever so slightly possible that, you know, AMD have told them this pricing, it's a placeholder pricing, whatever, and, you know, the prices could be 50% on top of all of these. I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying, you know, if it does, that it does end up like that don't get pissed it's you know not it's not confirmed yet by amd themselves just the retailers themselves are leaking this information and if it's leaked it's probably within the ballpark but not 100 percent guaranteed the third thing and this is the most important is the benchmarks we've seen so far are by no means complete 
yes, we've seen the blender tests. Yes, we've seen handbrake tests. Yes, we've seen some games running. The problem is, like, when it comes to the games, we can't actually tell all of the frame rates we're running with Ryzen. Um, simply because, like, in one case, they were running with, like, um, V-Sync enabled, and another one they didn't even have an FPS counter, and another one it was with Vega, but locked to 60 FPS. Um, and it, it's just kind of messy in that respect. The fourth problem is that, ultimately, no one is actually holding them that isn't either really under a lot of NDAs, or not accidentally leaked them. And the reason I keep bringing this up is because, ultimately, there is a chance that the processes may not perform as we expect. The issue I have, and the reason that I'm going to say that I'm just speaking a load of bullshit there, is I don't think these processes are going to be disappointing. Now, if they are, don't, you know, come lynch me. But I just, I don't see it. I mean, I'm going to be very conservative with my estimates here. I'm going to say that they are no faster than Skylake. Let's say that they're between Haswell and Skylake in single single thread performance. I want to stress that one more time. It's single thread performance. Let's assume we're going with the 1700X, which has an XFR of 3.8 gigahertz. That's 389 US dollars. That's nuts! Even if you go with the 1700, which is 319 US dollars, which has a turbo of 3.7 gigahertz, and you want to take the chance to overclock yourself. Okay, let's 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 go with that. And you compare that with like 7700K, which has, I believe, a base frequency, frequency excuse me, of like 4.2. Okay, 500 megahertz. Hell, even if you can overclock the KB Lake to, let's say, 5 gigahertz, guaranteed. Okay, well, let's say you can overclock Ryzen. I'm going to be conservative with the estimates. I'm going to say that the 1700, I don't know this for certain, before anyone says, but let's say you can conservatively overclock it to 4.2 gigahertz as a median. In other words, it doesn't require, you know, the luck of the gods with the silicon lottery. It's just, you know, a conservative estimate of the 1700 4.2 gigahertz. The problem is, it's cheaper than KB Lake, or at least within the ballpark, especially if you start taking motherboards into consideration. Supposedly, the motherboards are cheap. Now, just to my mind, if I'm a gamer, okay, KB Lake does have benefits. It has much higher single thread performance in terms of, once you take clock speed into account, but it's like, dude, twice the number of threads, twice the number of cores. If you're a streamer, if you're an encoder, if you're a programmer who's doing a lot of compiling, if you do audio editing, if you do anything else other than gaming, or especially if you're buying a gaming PC for, let's say, two years down the line, it's very hard to argue that... I mean, just for example, the 1600X, the 1500, they're six cores, 12 threads. Even if you make the assumption that they only clock to, let's say, 4.2 gigahertz, which I don't know what they do clock to, but let's just make that assumption... Jeez, that's two hundred fifty. Let's call it two hundred sixty dollars. Hell, let's even add a bit extra. Let's call it two hundred ninety US dollars. Let's be, you know, kind of pessimistic. Let's say two hundred ninety US dollars for a processor which overclocks to four point two gigahertz, six cores, twelve threads. That's really good value for money. And ultimately, the only reason I can see that this would not be appealing is if a the benchmarks are cherry-picked by AMD, which I do feel they have been. I do feel that they are running benchmarks which best show off the processor, which is one of the reasons I keep bitching that I would like to see a much wider gamut of tests, which is something, of course, that we will be doing if we get a processor, which we probably will. And I would also like to see, you know, what clock scaling there is. Like, how does the CPU perform from, let's say, the standard Wraith cooler to, let's say, a high-end air cooler to, let's say, a decent AIO to, let's say, a really high-end water cooling loop to, let's say, you know, beyond that, like, you know, when you go to phase ch change cooling or, I don't know, liquid nitrogen or, I don't know, putting it in the vacuum of space, like, what, how does that kind of uh, coincide to temperature? How does the chip scale with voltages? I'm hearing it's going to require about one volt per core, so how does it scale? Some folks supposedly at AMD have kind of gave hints that the chip scales very well with voltages, but very well with voltages and does scale well with voltages are two different things, so we're just going to have to wait and see on that. So my personal take on this, 
yeah, I can see the chips being really good. Ultimately, however, we're going to have to wait the best part of a month because I'm not taking into account the launch date. So let's say the chips are released 1st of March. Let's just make it easy on ourselves and say they're released the 1st of March. Really, I don't think the first reviews are going to be indicative of the scaling we're going to see with clock speed. They're not going to be... Let's say... Hell, let's say I got a retail sample. Let's say I've got an engineering sample. First of all, I probably would, if I was sent it by AMD, get an engineering sample, because that's generally what you get. Generally, it's not a retail sample. But let's even assume it was a retail sample, which is more indicative of final performance. The problem is, it's like, even if they were to send, let's say the eight, let's say they sent the 1700X and they sent me the 14, the 1300, which is a nice kind of, um, slice of the pie the problem is that doesn't tell me that much because i could get really lucky with the silicon and mine could just clock like a demon it could clock like another 20 percent without even raising the voltage a smidge on the other hand you could just run really shitty luck and yours could just not budge at all unless you put you know the equivalent of a i don't know like an obelisk of light through it so you just don't know so we're gonna to have to wait and see and obviously i've said stuff like how well does it scale with memory times how well does it scale with clock speeds in terms of uh, memory frequencies how well does it how well does it start scaling if you're doing quad count how well does it start scaling if you've got quad core a uh, quad channel memory in it like does that start affecting memory times does it start affecting uh, memory overclocking that type of stuff you know what's the motherboard how robust is the motherboard? Is there going to be any BIOS bugs? All of this stuff is stuff that, you know, may not be as exciting to think about as, wow, 8 cores, 16 threads, 16 megabytes of cache, but they are still imperative. Because ultimately, you don't want a system which has, like, a cold boot bug, which is possible. And I'm not trying to curse this system. I'm not, you know, I, I'm hoping it does well. But I was one of those folks who bought a Skylake CPU back in the day. Uh, sorry, not a Skylake CPU. That's that's completely rubbish, my friends. That is completely and utterly rubbish. I'm in a Sandy Bridge. And I, I literally bought one of the first motherboards, the first CPU, and it turned out to have the SATA bug. So naturally, some of the SATA ports just ended up not working after a couple of years simply because they quite literally burnt out. So, what I'm saying is that this information is very exciting. I'm personally pretty, pretty damn optimistic about the chips. But, you know, before you rush out buying, you know, super fast memory with really tight timings and a high end CPU and pre order all of the stuff with like the most expensive motherboard you can, just, you know, wait for a couple of reviews if you have any doubts at all. On the other hand, let's say you've owned an older CPU, let's say, once again, Sandy Bridge, you've got a 2500K, which is still a fairly decent CPU if you overclock it enough, but you think, you know what? My brother, you know, Bob, is always talking about an update to his old system. I'm just gonna give him the 2500K, it's his birthday anyway. I'll, you know, just rush out and buy Ryzen. It, it, it's no skid off my nose if it's not a massive upgrade, single thread performance. Then by all means pre-order, but my personal opinion on any time you're investing uh, a lot of money in technology, definitely wait until you start seeing the reviews. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit longer than what I anticipated, and yes, that is what she said, and I'll see you soon. Take care, and bye for now.